Many of you have traveled around the world with us this last July. We've been to Chad, we've been to Tanzania, we've been to Lesotho and Timor-Leste. We've been visiting the di different MAF programs and hearing more about what is happening in these countries and um, just the different interesting aspects of the countries we've learned about. Today, we're going to spend some time with Tobias and Mariah Mayer from South Sudan. They are back in South Africa to, to have some furlough, to spend some time with family and friends and, and special supporters. So we're going to just be asking them some questions, spending some time with them, getting to know them a bit more. And we hope that you will enjoy the time that we spend with them and that you will learn a bit more about MAF and what it is to be a real missionary on the mission field. Thank you so much for being here with us. We really appreciate it. It's so nice to see the two of you. It feels like just the other day we saw you. <laughs> when was that? In yeah. December. Oh, was it December? Oh, yeah. Yes, December we were. That's the last yeah. time we were here. Wow, okay. Yeah. okay. Just before we got married. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, it's good to get, have you guys back. Mm -hmm. Welcome back home. Thanks. Well, Thank you. home. <laughs> Your second home. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so guys, how long have you been at, with MAF now? I, I can't... Uh, it's been actually, count. in August it will be three years that I left oh. South Africa. Um, okay. That I officially yeah, started to sign my contract with MAF. Okay. Um, and yeah, then I was in Uganda for some training before I then mm -hmm. joined um, the South Sudan team in November of 2018. Oh, so it's only yeah. been three years. It feels yeah. like it's been yeah. ages and ages. Wow, okay. A lot has happened in the team mm -hmm. yeah. in the time, yeah. 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 But it's been good. We are really, I'm enjoying it very much to be there in South Sudan and the great team and interesting flying and yeah. getting to meet a lot of very great people there. Yeah. yeah. And I know you went onto the mission field single <laughs> and uh, you're now married. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So maybe just uh, you guys can tell us a bit more about how you met um, and just mm -hmm. how it's been for you. Um, yes. So as I said, I went to South Sudan as a single in 2018, November 2018. And then August 2019 is when Mariah came. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can share. Um, yeah, so I had actually lived in Juba in 2015 and 16 to work at Juba Christian Academy, which is where I currently teach. And I just went as an independent who wasn't with math, and I loved it. So I went back to the States for some more training and then moved back again in 2019 to Juba. And that's when we met because I moved into math housing um, right across from Tobias' house. So we were next door neighbors and within two weeks I was very interested and within three weeks I was quite smitten. <laughs> Calling my family, I just met this guy. Um, the feelings were mutual, so also, <laughs> very quickly. Notice Mariah and yeah, it wasn't all smooth sailing. There was some miscommunication, misunderstandings where um, at some point Mariah thought we, I just wanted to be friends yeah, forever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, luckily, um, then half a year later in January, we decided to start dating, and um, a year later after that, we got married. Yeah. So, it's been... so fun fact, we started dating while I was in Austria and Tobias was in Uganda, or no, you no, were in South Sudan. So we started dating online, virtually, virtually. <laughs> and then we got engaged virtually oh, wow. <laughs> while I was in the States and Tobias was again in South Sudan. Yeah. And then we did get married in person, oh, good. <laughs> um, but it was a very small COVID wedding because my dad is a pastor. He married us in my parents' living room and it was my parents and my siblings. And then Tobias's family also on Zoom. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was weird. <laughs> Even though it was virtual wedding with my family, it was still somehow intimate. It was yes. Just a special event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you did come back to South Africa and have. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> another wedding. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. actually the, yeah, in December we came to South Africa just before we went got married in the States. Um, so that my family could get to meet Mariah and she got to meet my family. Um, yeah, we, I mean, there were so many planned changes due to COVID and it ended up that way. Um, but we wanted to have a celebration here as well because my family wasn't able to come to the States. Um, so in April, we then, um, the week after Easter, we had a church 
celebration here in Pretoria mm -hmm. where most of my family and most of my wife's family were present and some friends as well, which was really special. Yes. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. I'm sorry I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Where are you from in the States? Um, Minnesota and North Dakota. Oh, okay. okay. A little bit of both. Just going back to flying, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> How has it been flying in South Sudan? It's very diverse. Um, so I started out flying on the 1A2 with a special diesel engine which runs on jet fuel, um, which was actually great. It's just a small plane. You can fly with the payload, usually two passengers, maybe three passengers if they're light and don't have luggage. And it's often that you fly passengers where they, it's just a small team wanting to visit um, a program or a church or mission station. Um, and sometimes you get to spend some time with them. So it's very, very personal. You're very near to the passengers and get to know what's actually happening on the ground there. Mm -hmm. That was really interesting. Um, then I transitioned onto the caravan, which is obviously bigger, uh, more seats. And at times it's a bit, you are detached. You feel like a bus driver. Well, <laughs> so we have different flights. Some type of flight is what we call a shuttle where we fly a, diff a specific route, we fly to different destinations in an area. Passengers or organizations can book just individual seats so they don't have to charge up their entire plane, which is cost effective for them. Um, but that feels like a, a bus drive. You yeah. fly to one destination, drop off passengers, pick up more, fly to the next, do the same again. So there's often not a lot of time where you can spend and engage with the, with the passengers. Um, but then there are other occasions when you get chartered and you fly to destination again and, and spend some time on the ground, which is which I really enjoy because you you get to know what's happening on the ground. You see how MAF plays a role in in the organizations that are working on the ground there, um, and yeah, just relationships are built that way as well, um, yeah. which which I thoroughly enjoy. And yeah. yeah, it's flying. Flying wise, technically it's, it can be challenging at times, especially in the rainy season, which is from April to October, November, when yeah, it's just a lot of thunderstorms can be around. And um, luckily South Sudan is not, there's not too many hills, so it's very flat. So luckily there's not that danger in, in a lot of parts. There are some hills in the southern part, um, which can be challenging as well. Um, however, in the north is a big marsh area, the soot, and so there's a soil called black cotton soil which acts like a sponge, it soaks up water. And then once the sun dries it, you can build a layer, a crust on top, which is solid, um, but then once you land you can sink through and get stuck. So those are the challenging airstrips. Yeah. Um, other challenges are probably also just the there's a lot of flying happening. There are a lot of different organizations flying there or operators operating there from different countries. So there's a lot of different standards of flying, a lot of accents, which make it sometimes difficult to understand people over the radio. Yes. So one has to be very vigilant, especially around Juba, mm -hmm. um, of other traffic as well. That can be a challenge, obviously. Um, yeah, and then in the dry season, it can be very dusty and smoky, uh, which adds another level of challenge mm -hmm. if you don't have visibility to see far. But otherwise, I really enjoy the challenges that we have there. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Do you think it's necessary for MAF to be there? I mean, what is the impact that MAF is having there? I, I definitely think it is important that we are there. Even though there are different operators, um, there are some organizations that can't afford the prices that others pay. Uh, where MAF has subsidized um, yeah, uh, prices for, for specific organizations. Um, also, the routes we fly, others don't always fly. So there are places where only we fly to, or almost exclusively fly to. Um, and like I said, I mentioned in the beginning, the, the shuttle services, that's something that um, only the UN offers to some organizations, but there you have to meet certain criteria that not all of our partners meet. Um, so there's a niche market where we definitely um, 
how not. Mm. So why would MAF fly to certain areas that other people don't fly to? Is it because it's more remote, a bit more difficult to get into, or? I think it's mostly because of the the work that's being done there. Um, some of them are just served by missionaries. Um, so there's there's some airstrips that are exclusively to to mission organisations, where um, yeah the UN doesn't fly to, or um, yeah where they had, would have to charter other other organisations anyways. Um, and yeah, so that gets a bit tricky at times. Okay. okay. Was it Catherine who was telling us that um, she much prefers the safer uh, way to fly instead of taking a cargo plane? That's well, yes. Okay. So there oh, are some okay. operators that are that people say are dodgy. Yeah. Where, where there are some cargo planes where they the no seat belts, mm. the chairs, oh, wow. the seats are like your plastic oh, no lawn chairs. <laughs> 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 so. Yeah, there is that safety aspect as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to yes. look down on other operators, yeah. but MF does have a, <coughs> a certain standard of safety where we, mm -hmm. which we want to maintain, and, and that is something that our, our uh, partners do really appreciate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, because you're taking uh, them into consideration. You know, it's yeah. it's their safety. You want them to reach their destination. Mm -hmm. Safety, and I, I mean, yes. I want to fly with somebody that <laughs> has that level, that standard, you know, and I yes. think it's it's important. It's also, I mean, it's good integrity from a Christian organization, you know, you caring for people. Yes. So, yeah, it's awesome. Definitely. Yeah. And then your work, I mean, I know you're teaching, are you teaching a lot of the, the math uh, kids? Mm -hmm. Maybe just give us a bit more information about that and how you're finding it. Mm -hmm. Um, Juba Christian Academy was founded by a couple different uh, organizations, mission organizations. MAP is one of the main founding members. So most of the young children with MAP are going to JCA, okay. um, which is quite quite fun that we have that community where the kids all get to see each other. Uh, but it's not just for MAP, it's also for other mission mm -hmm. organizations. So we have some children whose parents run an orphanage and some children whose parents are missionaries from Uganda with the church there. Some parents are actually just working uh, in non-mission organizations. They're just there for business and their kids need a place to go. Mm -hmm. So it's a, quite a mix of kids mm -hmm. and we've really, it's one of my favorite parts is the variety of how yeah. many kids we have from different cultures that speak different languages and so yeah, we're all sort of united in this little school in the JCA. How many kids are they about? It's very small at the moment. This past year we had 17 students. Okay. Next year it has continually been steadily growing. Very slowly but steadily. And so next year we have I think 22 signed up. But I think almost every year we've had additional students that have come in the second or third terms. So okay. so 22 are the ones that are, are uh, already signed up for next term. But there's probably more that yeah. will come as well. Yeah. Are there other options for other schools? there or I mean for expats or is it not really? JCA is the only school that really caters to international okay. students. There are South Sudanese schools um, but for people that are coming in from a different culture with a different standard of curriculum, JCA is the only school that I know of in Juba that is working to have that same level of curriculum. Um, of course, we can't have the same standards as every country because we have uh, children from North America and from Europe and from Africa, and we just we have to find sort of a middle ground. Yes. But it is a place where they can have. We we strive for a high standard of education, mm -hmm. um, and almost in preparation for sending them to another international school, maybe one in Kenya as they grow older. Because at the moment we only have grades up to grade five, okay. which is about year 10 or 11 years old, depending on, yeah, depending on the student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that is one of the big challenge in MAF is mm -hmm. having places where um, kids can go to school. So mm -hmm. it's great that South Sudan has that. 
yeah. um, has that option because it it kind of brings a bit of relief. Mm -hmm. Also, then um, the the wives or husbands don't have to hold homeschool the kids. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm sure that's a huge blessing for them. Mm -hmm. I've had several families tell me that JCA is the reason that they're able to be in Judah yeah. because if they didn't have that education, then they would take their kids and go elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, so. it's a huge deciding factor on missionaries mm -hmm. wherever they are. Like if they're going to remain there, mm -hmm. if there's good schooling for kids, it's a big factor. So, exactly. yeah, it's awesome that South Sudan has that. Mm -hmm. Now, there's actually one family that has decided, because JCA is only for primary levels, mm -hmm. they will move on to a different program, okay. just because there are high schools in that area. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, which just, you know, makes that point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There is a need for it for schools. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I suppose that's also what makes it, um, it's quite a challenge for MAP International to put people in, you know, there's always a need for pilots and engineers and people in mm -hmm. programs, but yeah. there's also a need for education for the kids. And mm -hmm. so it must be quite a juggling act for MAP International <laughs> to get that right and, <laughs> and place people in the right places, yeah. you know. Um, mm -hmm. So sure, it's big, yeah. just um, helps us understand the challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That MAF has. Yeah. And some families are comfortable with homeschooling. So we've had mm -hmm. families in the past that have been homeschooling, and sometimes they will join in various activities with JCA just as extracurricular yeah. sort of options, but mm -hmm. they do most of the homeschooling on their own. Mm -hmm. But a lot of families aren't comfortable with that. Exactly. Just, yeah. Some, some people don't. Mm -hmm. It's just not what they. I mean, I've met people that are like, wow, you're an amazing homeschooler, and then another one, and I'm like, yeah, maybe you should homeschool your kids. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's awesome, though. So, I mean, maybe both of you can give us uh, a bit of a testimony, you know, of, of something um, during your time in South Sudan that's really stood out, that's been amazing, um, that you'd like to share with us. So, from both of you, it'd be good to hear, give, uh, give us a testimony. I think, for me... Just over these years, just God's provision is just, yeah, I mean, Mariah coming to South Sudan is obviously the, the one that stands out most to me. Yeah. Um, but there have been lots of smaller issues, like the one not, not long ago, a month or two ago, I was in a remote village where the battery all of a sudden failed. Um, and I was supposed to fly back with a lady so I dropped off some passengers, but also it was supposed to take a lady with their, um, her sick child back to Juba that had a fever and uh, they s thought it was malaria. Um, and just on the same day, like we said before, there no engineering in, in South Sudan. Um, just on that same day, there was actually a, an engineer coming from Kenya because of an issue with another plane. And so early the next morning, he was able to he was flown to the place where I was, he could swap the battery and he could take the, the, the lady back with the child. And it's, it's minor things like that where you just think, man, it's, is that a coincidence? Um, God, yeah. yeah. And it just, it's been in different other ways. Also in the, in the daily lives where, where sometimes you're just frustrated and then you come back to, to Juba and there's one specific uh, guy of our dispatchers, he's just always smiling and you meet him and he's all happy and jolly and it's like, okay, that's, it's not that bad. <laughs> just smile yeah. again. And, um, so those are some of the, the things and I think also the provision and, or how things worked out with our marriage, our wedding, mm -hmm. ma wedding celebrations. Um, it was just, yeah, just God providing mm -hmm. the right thing at the right time, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's that up for me. Yeah. yeah, God's provision has also been a big theme with JCA because we have been teaching at a very, um, it's it's worked for us, it's functioned, but it's small. It was a two bedroom apartment and then a one bedroom apartment. So basically teaching in in bedrooms and in living rooms and hallways. So I had a class in essentially a hallway between two other classes in the kitchen. Oh, so wow. there's people coming and going, we made it work, it worked, but God has provided a new building for us for the next year. And I've been praying about it for at least two years now. Um, and he's, he's just provided and it's amazing because it was a, a 
place that the board of the school had looked at a couple years ago and decided, no, it's too big. It won't work for our needs right now. And so they just sort of put it on hold. But when they went back this time, they took a look and thought, this is actually, this is what our school needs now. And they asked about the price and it was, I think half the price wow. of what we were paying per month for this other place and about 10 times bigger. Wow. And just, we have outdoor space, we have a huge warehouse building that we could use for uh, indoor recess mm -hmm. or things to do when it's raining as well as a building that actually has different classrooms, all in a hallway <laughs> where we can <laughs> access each room um, without going through others so uh, much. And there's classrooms, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's really so, God's provision and God's timing. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's been, yeah, His provision and His good timing. And also yeah. not just for the space, but for teachers to teach. Uh, it's always been a struggle for JCA to find enough teachers mm -hmm. to teach. And this past year, we, during right before COVID hit, our administrator went on her home assignment, which she knew about, she planned for, someone else was coming in. Well, that person came in and that week, I think it was only just a couple days later, everything shut down because of COVID. And so this new administrator had an immense challenge of taking wow. our school and moving it to, to various things. We had some in-person tutoring where at times I was traveling to visit students mm -hmm. so that everyone was just in their own space, their mm -hmm. own home. We had times when, quite a bit of time where we were on Zoom, we just did school online. We had some times where it was okay for us to teach the students just in our own compound. So we couldn't even travel out. We could just teach, uh, I taught the math kids mm -hmm. on the compound yeah. where I lived. And then another teacher taught on the compound where she lived, yeah. and another teacher taught on the compound where she lived. Um, and then that administrator's time ran out and yet we had a math um, person who would come in who was willing to then take the administrator role again. And so she finished being the administrator until our current administrator, April Havaker, was able to come back. Okay. And so God has provided for staffing even in a very stressful year. Yes. And um, even one of our teachers, she had her maternity leave for the all of the third term. And so we were short of teacher and we just asked God for a teacher and he brought someone in who was going to come to Juba for just a week and then she agreed to stay for a whole term and to teach. Wow, so that's amazing. it is, God has been yeah. very faithful in providing what we need yes. when we need it. And yeah. I mean, I just heard that there's another teacher who's moving to help JC for next term. So um, we're not fully staffed yet, but we're trusting that God mm -hmm. will provide in his good timing. And he will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, this just reminds me of when Tobias first started <laughs> his recruitment process with MAF. And there was a lot of back and forth. And there was a lot of times where it was like, no, I'm not going to I'm not gonna join MAF. No, no, I'm going to join MAF. I'm not going to join MAF. I'm going to join MAF. And um, I, I just remember going, you know, like, God's timing. We leave Tobias to <laughs> decide. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then also with your funding, and I remember mm -hmm. sitting and, and you being very, very specific about saying, I don't want to fundraise, yeah. you know, God must provide. Yeah. But then you went out and you did fundraise and mm -hmm. God provided beyond your, your yeah. expectations, you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so the whole backwards and forwards of I'm joining MAF, I'm not joining MAF, that kind of delayed things. But then you guys met, you know, mm -hmm. at the time that you met and yeah. you kind of got to look at it and go, <laughs> Maybe if you had gone when you in initially yeah. said you wanted to go, things wouldn't have worked out the way things have worked out, you know? Mm -hmm. So I yeah. think for me, I mean, just listening to you two, it really shows like how we mustn't push against the door that isn't opening mm -hmm. and we must allow God to, to do things in His time and He will always provide. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we don't always know what that provision looks like, but He will always provide. So that is really, I think for me, like for, yeah, it's an amazing testimony. Yeah. Um, and to see who you've married, and I mean, mm -hmm. you guys look perfect for each other, <laughs> you know, in so many ways. So it really yeah. is amazing. It's, a, it's an amazing testimony that you have. Um, yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. I remember when, when back when I was in application, and I, at one point, I wrote to um, Gabby 
that I feel like I'm Jonah. And, and she said that you have said the same thing. <laughs> go to Nineveh. I don't want to go to Nineveh. <laughs> it was. It was a, a Jonah situation. <laughs> Wow, so it all works out in the end, and it's amazing. It's amazing to see how it works out in the end, you know. So, yeah. yeah. And then, okay, so you're back in South Africa. What are you going to be doing while you're here? Hmm. There's a lot of admin stuff that we need to do. Mm -hmm. um, like, so we got married in the States, and we still need to register our marriage here in South Africa. Um, actually, also in Germany, which we can do here at the embassy. <laughs> A bit complicated. Um, so there's that uh, license renewal. I want to renew my pilot license. Mm -hmm. If I can get an appointment, my driver's license. Um, some of our banking details. So there's a lot of admin stuff that mm -hmm. needs to happen. Um, and then, yeah, we, yeah, we initially plan to do some traveling and visit some people, especially in the Eastern Cape, where I did my flight training. Um, but yeah, just due to COVID and some other reasons we decided we'll just have probably two zoom or um, teams meetings where we'll do presentations for our supporters that we can show them what we're doing and for people to ask questions if they, if they yeah. have them um, and apart from that it's just spending time with family and resting yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's been a very a very busy uh, mm -hmm. time for the two of you very much and so. I suppose it's good to take the time out to also rest and yeah. and just uh, get some time together, mm -hmm. yeah. which is good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also quite excited to spend time with Tobias's family yes. when we're not planning a wedding, because both times I've been here, we've been planning a wedding in America and then planning a wedding here in South Africa. So just to be able to get to know them. And, mm -hmm. yeah, without that spend time without stress. pressure, yes, yes. <laughs> planning anything. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. And then you guys go back to South Sudan on, in August, mm -hmm. near the end of August, right? Yes, on the 21st is when we leave again. Uh, and then get there, have to quarantine for a week or two. We'll have to see what the regulations will be then. Mm -hmm. And then back to our jobs. Yeah. yeah. So just get back into flying, back into mm -hmm. teaching. Is yeah. there anything else that's coming up that you want to share? We hope not. <laughs> <We're> just, <laughs> just just <laughs> yeah, so so we had a thought that we or we would like just to settle down a bit. Mm -hmm. Kind of get yeah. into a routine. Exactly. Yes. Um yeah, like you said, the last half well, more than half a year it's been basically since we started dating has been a fairly turbulent year with COVID and the challenges with our marriage or weddings. Um mm -hmm. so we want to settle a little bit. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll see what will develop then mm -hmm. yeah, in okay. the future. Okay. Yeah. yeah, one of the things that we have, it isn't new, but it's something that we've really put a lot of thought into as we've been married and even before I think when we were dating, we talked about how hospitality and trying to support the missionaries that come through Juba is one of our passions as well. Okay. And so, but we, it's just been very <laughs> busy and stressful and we haven't, had a lot of time to do that so mm -hmm. we're hoping that as life sort of settles into routine we'll be able to do that more okay um, that'd be an awesome thing to do mm -hmm. yeah. get yeah. people orientated and, and settled yeah. and mm -hmm. just yeah. make them feel welcome well even for the missionaries that live outside of juba mm -hmm. they often will come into the math compound to stay on their their break in juba oh, so okay. they'll come in for a week math has a guest house in the nice. compound where we live and so it's a great opportunity to get to know them a bit and just kind of offer them a bit of hospitality before they go back out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, we were actually also in this last year, just after it was the end of April, we moved into a bigger house mm -hmm. and we have space now where we can also mm -hmm. um, accommodate other people. Okay. Yeah, before it was just a two room apartment where we lived in. And so it's a bit more space now, which is okay. also really great. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so do you have any, you know, prayer requests, praise items that you want to share with us that we can, you know, share with others and, and pray for you mm -hmm. um, for now, going forward? I think, I mean, prayer is obviously just the provision, like we said earlier, mm -hmm. just yeah. how, how amazing God is and how he provides at the right time. 
because when things are challenging and stressful, it, it works out somehow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, also for just protection in South Sudan, um, there is still um, some unrest in certain areas and Juba, even though Juba is fairly quiet, not not even a month ago, there was actually shooting right opposite our compound, or compound where, where a guy was supposed to be arrested and he didn't want to get arrested, so he was firing at the at the army. Wow. And actually, some bullets went into our compound and hit some of our buildings. Luckily, no one was injured or anything, mm -hmm. but yeah, just for the protection, the, the families of the two houses where, that were hit, they weren't in Juba at the time. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a praise, but also a prayer request, just for the protection. Um, I think another prayer for us, is, especially for us as a couple, just to settle in as a married couple, which all its challenges, it's not, but they're also challenges if two people move together. Um, yeah, and just for us to, to see how we can, can minister in, in South Sudan, like Mariah said with the missionaries passing through Juba that we can host and help them also rest in Juba. It's kind of crazy. We we take our and on, leave Juba and people come from the field to Juba to take their own. Yeah. But yeah, just to have them or make them feel at home. Mm -hmm. and those are the things and I guess for the protection while we're flying, you know, the yeah. challenges I mentioned earlier. It's not always easy. And especially since we don't have engineering in South Sudan, really, um, it is sometimes a challenge. We'll be getting an engineer there who will be able to do some of the work, but not major things. Mm -hmm. um, so just for the protection there and for the provision at the right times. Mm -hmm. I, think. Um, I am so thankful for the new building that got us provided for the school. We're all very excited about it. That moving in process is happening while we're here in South okay. Africa. So by the time we get back, most of the things should be actually moved into the new building. Um, so we're, yeah, just so thankful for that. Yes. One of my prayer requests is for a fully staffed, um, yeah, Teacher a full team yeah. Yeah. for our next school year. Okay. Yeah, and I think also just that we will keep focusing on God as our center and not get distracted by all the things to do. Yeah. Um, but that God will unite us by our focus in Him. Because, mm -hmm. I don't know, you can do a lot of good things, but if it's not in God's will, then you're missing out on the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Well, we will definitely pray for you too while you're here Thank in you. South Africa and when you go back to South Sudan. And um, really appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I hope that you will have a blessed time in South Africa with family and um, that you'll find a routine when you get back to South Sudan and it won't be so crazy busy. <laughs> you need to be intentional about that though. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Really good to be here again and mm -hmm. to meet up. Yeah.